Hello and welcome. I've just got back from the Warhammer Fest, slightly less uh, loot than last year in 2017 when I was there. Um, for one, there's no big Thunderhawk, there's no Telemon Dreadnought or, or anything like that. I've got my cup of tea because uh, it's about a three hour drive there and back uh, where I live in Norfolk. That's just to keep me going throughout this video. So I've come back and I, I wanna do a few videos straight away for you. Um, if you do follow me or if you don't follow me on, on Instagram, it's just super underscore saying, obviously with the E's as number threes, like my uh, YouTube channel name, I have been posting uh, quite a few pictures of the events, uh, some, I say, s secret pictures of, uh, you know, the, the slideshows that um, Forge World and Games Workshop do. I don't go to all of the seminars, I just pick a few, because otherwise I'd be sat in a room all day. I wouldn't be able to go out and have a look at all the, the other things that are going on. So Instagram is typically the, the first place you'll see uh, any of the uh, pictures and things. And that's sort of eyes on the ground kind of thing, not brushed up, not in terms of Games Workshop, uh, Warhammer community, putting putting them out and making them look, you know, as best as possible. This is just from a guy that get into a place, spending their own time doing all this and trying to give you the content as uh, as quickly as possible. Thought the uh, Warhammer, Fe Warhammer Fest, it was good, um, but it was definitely a bit more uh, subdued than last year. Of course, last year, had the big, uh, big announcement of the Primaris Space Marines and um, Death Guard and, uh, you know, the 8th edition. And there's a big push on that Dark Imperium box set there where you could see everything. You could play, test 8th edition rules. Um, yeah, we had to wait many, many months, you know, for the Death Guard miniatures and Mortarian and things like that to be released. I think they were released, what, I want to say September, October time last year. So it was, it was a long time since they were first previewed, you know, a few months before last year's Warhammer Fest. Okay, so as part of uh, this uh, Warhammer Fest um, recap, uh, I like to go over the program which you get. Um, it's the same program for Saturday and Sunday. Leaning heavily there with Age of Sigma, female, Sigmarine. This is how, how the arena um, broke it down. So um, on ground level, you had the, the big gaming area, you had the sales area for Games Workshop and then Forge World sales area. And then over here you had the video games and merchandise and you had seminar room one uh, on the first level you had Forge World specialist games and then seminar room two where Forge World had uh, and specialist games had their um, two seminars. And then uh, the second floor you had seminar room three and uh, the Warhammer design studio, uh, the Warhammer world studio and Golden Demon. So typically that's where you found um, you know, your games workshop painted miniatures and citadel miniatures and any kind of previews possibly what they're working on scenery and you had all the golden demon en entries too so you get one of these um with your ticket uh you've got a bit of a contents area you've got start and finish times um basically saturday they they close at the pod demonstrations close at five and the signings um finish at five tournaments end at 8 p.m. so yes you can stay till 8 p.m. with your tournaments but the whole place opened at 10 um, you know on the dot pretty much a little bit early actually uh, sales area finishes at 6 so it's now well 10 past 6 so yeah uh, sales area would have would have closed by now and then what's that Warhammer Fest so it just gives you a rundown um, with the Forge World Studio, the Warhammer World Studio, White Dwarf Design Studio, the Army Painters, Heavy Metal and uh, Video Games and then these are all the people that were there so all the Forge World Design Team, um, Forge World Warhammer Age Sigma Design Team, they're a new team basically um, that dragon that they've been doing for like a year, two years, that's now complete. Uh, there's a picture of it, there might even be a video of it in my other Warhammer Fest uh, video, uh, Specialist Games. Um, so these guys are all about the Blood Bowl um, and the Adeptus Titanicus and Necromunda. Um, Middle Earth, Design Studios, so you've got the Warhammer Design Studios there and the Warhammer World Studio. And the community, Black Library authors. So these are all the authors that are, are there um, for you to uh, get your books uh, signed. And then this is what happened uh, today uh, on the Saturday. 
Um, I attended the specialist uh, studio and the 412 Future products. Um, but as you can see, you, you, you can be, you can have your books and things signed from 10, 10 o'clock uh, by all of the guys there. Um, and then you could be in a seminar, well, up until basically four o'clock, uh, three o'clock one would probably finish at four. So you could be in seminars all day if you chose to, to go uh, to, to all of them if you wanted. I think the specialist uh, studio one was uh, very good because that covered uh, Adeptus Titanicus in detail, Blood Bowl and the new releases and uh, Necromunda as well, uh, all their products. And the 412 one, obviously, by Tony Cottrell was, was very good too. Um, but you've got all these demonstration pods as well. So Painting an Imperial Knight by uh, Giuseppe, um, incredibly talented uh, artist there. Um, and then you've also got, and then you've got like a Golden Demon Q&A look um, with Max. Uh, so they have those in those demonstration pods. This is what happens on Sunday. So very similar. You've got the different seminars and things. Um, so yeah, if you didn't go to one on the Saturday, you could go to it on the Sunday. Um, so Golden Demon, uh, here you go. There's just a rundown of them all. And then a little bit of an advert for the Korea tournament and gaming area. So you've got all the tournaments and things happening. And then this was what was available on the day. So new Alpha Legion, uh, Lernian Terminator Squad, Alpharius, the Land Speeder. And they say that that's new, but that came out a uh, couple of... Um, weeks ago I think. So basically you're looking at uh, the Landspeeder and Alpharius and Leon and the Lernian um, Terminator squad. Not a huge amount of new things really uh, but there's definitely a lot of new things coming out in the next few months. Uh, you could also get your event exclusives um, including like the Rogue Trader and yeah uh, I've only been away from the internet for a few days but um yeah there's a big hoo-ha about uh rogue trader games workshop they they didn't really want to release those images and things but they have done um then you've got some more event exclusives in terms of uh t-shirts and uh mugs you could get your goblin mercenaries as well you could get a uh, mamak war leader and all this was pretty much new well i think it came out like i want to say last weekend um uh, but you can get your Bounty Hunters look, um, really nice looking Bounty Hunters, and your Vansar gang as well. Um, and you could pick up Gang War 3, uh, and the dice, very nice dice. Blood Bowl, uh, they had the, the Doom Lords there, so you could pick them up. Um, yeah, they've got some really nice looking models coming for Blood Bowl from the Specialist Game uh, team, so they'll, they're going to be on my, my other video. Um, you could pick up the Achille and Leviadon, and all the, the Deepkin were there. And some more Deepkin. It says it's new for the Death Watch Captain Artemis, but I think that's just new because he's available separately. But I did pick up the uh, Death Watch Codex. And yes, uh, pre release Wolfsbane, you could pick that up uh, there. Um, almost picked that up, but I'm so far behind in Horus Heresy uh, that I think I'm just going to wait until it gets in uh, softback. And I was going to pick up Imperator, and actually the special edition of that looks, yeah, very nice. The, the pages are kind of like blotched around, and yeah, it, it's they've done a really good job with that. Yeah, they had, you know, thousands of books there, but yeah, the Watchers of the Throne uh, and the Magos, they were both sold out um, there. And there you go, some champions, and there you go. So here we got some more events and things happening. Uh, so you've got an Age of Sigma open day in June. July, you've got the Forge World open day on Sunday the 15th. So it's actually, a, I think it's a month earlier now. So that's when the, the open day is for uh, Forge World. And then September, you've got a Warhammer World open day. Uh, so I might go to the Forge World one, 15th of July, that'd be nice. And uh, possibly the, the September one, but we'll see. We'll see how the channel goes and we'll see see if I'm still releasing daily content by then. I might have run out, who knows. But yeah, I just thought I'd uh, pack the official program into uh, this review 
so that you get a taster of sort of what you expect uh, from these events uh, if you can't make it over from Australia or America or Canada or you know wherever. So back onto the rest of the video. So this video is uh, just like a little bit of a, a recap um, with some of the things I bought uh, at the Warhammer Fest you know on the table. I like to create these recap uh, videos on top of uh, the typical video that will have um, most of the pictures that I took of the day and a, a load of video as well and some hands-on with uh, Adeptus Titanicus as well. I like to do the two videos and um, this is more of my natural video uh, where I'm behind the camera talking to you with things in front of it whereas the kind of slideshow thing uh, I'll normally put some music on there um, or a bit of a voiceover as well. So stay tuned for that I'll try and have that up uh, tomorrow. I know Sunday's normally a non-Warhammer Wednesday day but you know it's been Warhammer Fest this weekend so uh, I think that's a good excuse. So as I was saying I thought that this year was a bit of a subdued year. No Castellan Knight at all anywhere. The you know the, the new Imperial Knight that's uh, like a mini Warhound Titan. No, no pictures of it, uh, no model to touch or to look at. Uh, really really shocked. I'm um, really shocked and surprised. Uh, where where was it where was that that will be the name of this um the title of this uh, video will be where was the uh, castellan knight I, I am actually really gobsmacked because that's supposed to come out in the next uh, couple of months no orcs can't find any orcs either uh, they're, they're supposed to come out in a few months so two really big releases uh, for games workshop yes they had a load of content there for uh, adeptus titanicus and um, but Really shocked that they didn't have anything about orcs and nothing about the Castle and Knight. I know the Castle and Knight will probably sell like hotcakes, be very, very popular. They had the Harlequins Codex there. Uh, obviously, they have the Death Watch. I didn't see the Imperial Knight Codex, but again, that's due in, in a month or two. They had the, the new Eldar um, scenery, you know, the gate. Uh, they had there, that there. Maybe it's going to be up for pre-order next weekend, possibly. I can't remember from the White Dwarf when that's up for pre-order, but they had that there and that looks lovely. No Castellan Knight uh, and no teaser for Orcs or anything like that. The Golden Demon entries as always looked very nice, very beautiful. The freehand stuff is just out of this world. In my other Warhammer Fest video, I have taken some video of uh, you know some of the, the entries, but we all know that Golden Demon really does kick off uh, on the Sunday. Um, I'm not in a position at the moment to, you know, spend the night there and uh, soak up the, the content for the full two days. Another odd thing is I was expecting there to be cans of spray. You know, you go to a big event like this, uh, thousands of people go there, you expect there to be everything and anything to be there. And there wasn't a single can of spray. It might just be me, but last year there were cans of spray. I was hoping to pick up a can of lead belcher. But now I'm even going to have to order it off uh, GW's store and pay postage because you don't get postage free with a spray can here in the UK. Um, or I'm going to have to go all the way to Norwich and um, pick one up. So that was a little bit of a letdown. Like I say, don't know what's happened, but last year they had cans of spray. I managed to just pick up the Death Watch Codex. I went back to the stand probably about half an hour to an hour later after I picked mine up and there was one left. So again, not sure about the stocking issues there and um, whether they had enough. Uh, went over to Black Library and the Magos uh, by Dan Abnett and Watchers of the Throne. I think those two books, the limited edition, they had, they had already sold out. So nobody could actually pick those up um, at the event, which must have disappointed a few people too. Forge World, there wasn't an awful lot going on. You had Altharius, okay, so that is a big release if you're really into the Alpha Legion. Um, and it's such a lovely, lovely model. So, so tempted to pick one up. And you had the Alpha Legion Terminators, very good too. You had all the event exclusive models, uh, except for the Warhammer HQ uh, exclusive, you know, Land Raider and, you know, the Primaris uh, Rhino. Don't get confused, it's not a Primaris Space Marine Rhino, it's just a Rhino that's called Primaris, it's one of the HQ tanks. And they had the uh, Forge World Resin Necromunda models, you know, like the hired guns and the bounty hunters and things like that. And they had the two uh, Bugman's Bar Dwarf uh, models for Blood Bowl 2. And they had the Retro Land Speeder. I, yeah, I almost balked when I saw the, the price of it, £50. 
it better be absolutely incredible but I bought it for the channel not for me wasn't a big fan I'm still not a big fan but I thought I'd buy it for the channel and uh, you know share it with you all because we don't know when it's going to come out in the Forge World seminar they did actually show pictures of it uh, with the uh, two space moons in mark 4 power armor so they so Forge World are going to release it again but with a better usable weapon options okay so you know those that missed out on this 30 year anniversary you've gonna get the chance to buy a better one and put it that way which yeah is a kick in the teeth really for those that spent sort of 50 pound on on this one but there we go um so yeah that's all i really picked up uh just the retro land speeder and the death watch codex and um, death watch codex comes out today so i thought i'd get that and try and get a video out to you today and um, being the release date and the retro land speeder of course um gonna get a video out to you today as well on that and then tomorrow will be the warhammer fest uh, uh footage and then from monday we'll just carry on with the daily content as normal there are only a few more necron videos um that i'll be rele releasing um, one will be my Necron Army so far, the Necron Codex review, and a painting guide. But I need to grab hold of a can of spray, um, which I might do next weekend. You know, we'll, we'll see. The painting guide might be delayed a little bit. I'd rather show you my Death Guard Army so far, including all the Nurgle creatures and things, uh, and my Tyranid Army, and start covering uh, more of the Mechanicus side of things and the Death Watch. Because I think we're gonna have a break in June. It's gonna be Age of Sigmar. I think we're gonna have a break until July for the Imperial Knights. Um, obviously, we'll, well, I'll be doing some reviews there for them. So in summary, it was a great event. The seminars were incredible as always. The Forge World staff um, were really helpful and um, really engaging and really positive um, in promoting Adeptus Titanicus. That was great that they did all of that. But I just think it didn't have quite the punch uh, of last year where you had the, the Thunderhawk gunship. Um, yes, it wasn't in plastic, but the resin model is, is superb. And you didn't have the, you know, 8th edition and, and Dark Imperium and the big buzz with that. Yeah, two ways of improving the event uh, today would have definitely have been to have uh, the Castellan Knight somewhere. Um, you know, behind a cabinet or something with the codex, uh, that would be a huge improvement. Uh, especially as I think they're doing like some kind of painting guide for it or something on sun tomorrow. Just a little teaser with orcs, maybe one new orc model, even if it's like a new orc boy or something like that. I think those two things um, would have definitely uh, made the event, um, you know, better. Maybe it's still not better than, than last year possibly, but um, definitely they would have improved it. So anyway, um, that's it for Warhammer Fest. Uh, apologies if uh, you didn't uh, see me or get to meet me or whatever. Or I'll be at another event. Uh, maybe the, they'll have a, a Warhammer 40k open day in August time at uh, Nottingham, which I'll, I'll try and attend. But as always, I'm available um, for communication, interaction and things, either via email or uh, Instagram or through the YouTube to send me uh, messages or comments even comments on this video I try and read all of them if you were there please do put it in the comments below uh, what was your favorite part of Warhammer Fest did, did you manage to get many games in please do put it in the comments below did you pick up our Alpharius um, or did you <laughs> be great to hear from you thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the Emperor Protects